Hi, folks. My name is Chuck Shad Duck. I'm the Digital Duck, and I live in St. Joseph, Missouri, of the U.S. of A. I'm also the proud owner of PeopleHelpingPeopleClub.net. That's PeopleHelpingPeopleClub.net. There'll be a link down below also. And what I do in PeopleHelpingPeopleClub.net is we share with all this new stuff called cryptocurrency and the digital world, what's going on. And one of the biggest questions I get and from a lot of folks is they don't understand and they want to know just what is this Bitcoin phenomenon going around that you see all over the news. You see it, people talking about it, definitely online, everywhere, people trying to do this and do that with it. So I'm just here to share with you what I know, what I found out about what is a Bitcoin, what the mainstream people are thinking about it, where it come from, and actually, I'd like to share with you also a pretty long video, but it is so informative that it will really make your eyes stand open. So, I'm Chuck Shaduck. I will be back, but I will be paused and gone for a while while these videos I share with you. This is what Bitcoin is and what it's about and how it's going to change our world. So, I'm going to share the screen with us right now. Give me a second while I bring it up here. And I do appreciate everybody stopping over and saying hello today. That's peoplehelpingpeopleclub.net is a way that you can actually accumulate and earn Bitcoin from a group of people that are really fantastic. We all work together. So as you can see on the screen right now, it is what is Bitcoin? And it's about three minutes. There's several videos after this that I will play and share with you. I hope you're having a great day because I know I am. I, I am. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'll be back here shortly. You take care and enjoy this video. Bitcoin explained simply. This is Matthew. He works with online payment and his grandmother, Margaret, has just begun banking online. She's heard of Bitcoin, but doesn't know what it is. Matthew can explain. Everyone knows about money. We use cash or cards to buy things, either in shops or online. Bitcoin works in a similar way, but is a completely digital currency. It is created and stored electronically. The banks control Margaret's money, whereas it's the users themselves that control Bitcoin payments. Her money can be affected by inflation, but Bitcoin can't. By controlling production, they keep their value on quite a solid level. This makes it popular in countries with economic problems, as users can circumnavigate inflation and other issues. However, even small events, such as a bad press report, can have a drastic effect on Bitcoin price. So where could Margaret use Bitcoins? Certain companies and online retailers now accept it as payment. However, Bitcoin is still relatively unknown by businesses, as it's a developing network. The simple and largely anonymous nature of Bitcoins has also made it attractive to criminals in the black market. From Matthew's perspective, Bitcoin is an app on a computer or smartphone that works as an online wallet. It's easier to make payments than with conventional debit or credit cards. Just enter the recipient's address, the amount to pay, and press send. Margaret can send and receive money instantly anywhere in the world and at any time. Unlike credit cards, there are either no or only small fees because there is no bank to go through and no personal or sensitive data is stored. Users each have their own address from which they can send and receive bitcoins. A collection or block of these transactions is then added to the blockchain, bitcoins equivalent of a bank's ledger. Users that maintain this form of accounting are rewarded with new Bitcoins. This is known as mining. There is a fixed amount of Bitcoins, but over time, existing Bitcoins become divided to maintain a consistent value. Now that Matthew has explained Bitcoins, Margaret doesn't find online payment to be all that complicated anymore. Bitcoin appears to be a real alternative form for worldwide currency for the future. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to watch why anybody should really put any dollars in Bitcoin. Here's one from the recent CNBC uh, television network.
taking Bitcoin in isolation of, you know, putting all the other assets aside, we believe Bitcoin disrupts gold. We think it's a better gold if you look at the properties of money and what makes gold, gold scarcity. Bitcoin's actually fixed in supply. It's, it's, it's better than scarce in gold. It's more portable. It's more, it's fungible. It's more, you know, durable. Um, it sort of equals or better gold across the board. So if you look at a $100 billion market cap today, now, last week, it might have been more like 200. <laughs> but um, so it's actually a buying opportunity. We think that there's a potential appreciation of 30 to 40 times because you look at the gold market today, it's a $7 trillion market. And so a lot of people are starting to see, they see that. They recognize the store of value properties. Um, so we think regardless of the price moves in the last uh, few weeks, it's still very um, a very underappreciated asset. And Bitcoin's just the first cut. If Bitcoin's a better gold, imagine your financial system with only gold as an asset class. Um, that's how sort of early in the beginning of this is. There's going to be a menu of many cryptocurrencies, and they're going to rethink the entire internet and how we sort of view it. Um, you could never buy a piece of the internet back in the 90s. You couldn't buy the protocols. You could buy, you could invest in a VC firm on Santa Road that had to pick Amazon versus Pets.com. So you had to get lucky, you had to be very privileged and get lucky um, um, many times to, to get it. Um, now you can just buy a piece of the protocol. So buying Bitcoin is like a call option on the entire B Bitcoin ecosystem. A Bitcoin company will not work out with, before Bitcoin works out itself first. So the ultimate Bitcoin bet is Bitcoin, or the ultimate Ether, Ethereum bet is Ether. And you're ba basically buying a piece of the racetrack. And you're not picking, you know, Seabiscuit, doesn't matter who wins as long as the races are running. You, you're a part of it. Um, and that's the beauty here. And usually the retail investors come in at the end. You know, they get dumped this stuff post IPO, um, you know, 10 years after a company was founded. Now retail's been the ones who have been there first. And actually, Wall Street is completely uh, asleep at the wheel and late to the game. Uh, Silicon Valley has actually completely missed it, too. People in Silicon Valley and the companies have maybe personally got it. Some VCs have personally invested in coins, but they structurally were unable to invest, only had to invest in, in C Corps. And so buying gold or buying Bitcoin is not something they do, but the partners were investing their own money. And Silicon Valley very much missed cryptocurrency um, because they want to miss it. Um, it, it, it's not good for the centralized application layer, the FANG companies that sit on top of the internet. Cryptocurrencies actually decentralize that, pull it all down to the layer below, the protocol layer, and the value actually accrues to the people who buy into and use and build the network. Not one company, there's not a headquarters of Bitcoin or Ethereum. These are, these are networks that are decentralized and owned by, in a very democratic way, the users of them. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on Just another reason why this is taking the world by storm. Why more people are saying invest in this next currency. So I'm going to share this video. The one thing I'm watching today is a psychological level of $10,000 in Bitcoin, which was broken through midday in the session. If we see a close over this level, then it should start the next wave higher and attract fresh capital into the market. The aggressive sell-off from 20,000 to just under 6,000 most likely was the crypto bubble we've all been waiting for, clearing out those that were late to the party. Relaxation from South Korea on their effort to stop speculation in Bitcoin has started to build confidence in the market, along with the rise in the other majors like Litecoin and Ethereum. In addition, the hedgers have pared back their activity as the price is falling, allowing those prices to rise. But the one thing we're still in the test phase of is how outside markets play a role in price. And with Bitcoin futures trading for two months, we could start to look at a clearer picture of how outside markets affect it. For instance, the S&P 500 tested the 200-day moving average at 2529 on February 6th, and Bitcoin also tested its contract low at $5,940. Does this mean that if U.S. equities continue to run higher, Bitcoin will have a chance to retest 20,000? Only time will tell. Just one thought. Here's several more. They're all over and it is here to stay. So why should you possibly invest in Bitcoin and how? Let's watch this.
I think what you're starting to see is that both retail and institutional investors are getting excited about Bitcoin because the narrative has changed. The asset class came out of nowhere about eight years ago, and it started with Bitcoin, and now actually people have gotten so far down the rabbit hole that they're diversifying into other assets. I think that the early days of Bitcoin were often plagued by people thinking about Bitcoin for money laundering and drug trafficking, but it's graduated from that. The narrative on the street is that Bitcoin is digital gold, it's gold 2.0, it's here to stay, and investors want exposure to it. And but from a gold, for, you're thinking of it as a gold, like gold. I think it's a digital store of value. It's gold 2.0 because investors think that Bitcoin is more portable, right. more divisible, How do you and very highly scarce. Versus Ethereum, versus Zcash, versus any one of these other. Absolutely. So forms. I think when the dust settles, today you're seeing a lot of different tokens coming into the market. And ultimately, there'll be probably five to ten digital currencies that matter. They'll each have addressable markets, they'll each have uh, distinct prices and distinct use cases. Okay, so what's the di- tell us, for those of us who don't understand this stuff, Sure. what is the difference, use case, between Ethereum and Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is really meant to be a transactional currency. That Except that it's not being used for transactions. Well, today it's largely driven by speculation. No question about that. and may not be the most popular thing to put out there, but certainly it is for transactions. Something like Ethereum, on the other hand, was really intended to be a substrate for the Internet of Things, the machine payable web. You're talking about a totally new layer of technology that can really allow for smart contracts, connected devices. And so they can actually... So it's not, it's not digital gold? It is not digital gold. And in fact, Ethereum okay. was not originally intended to be a form of money, um, whereas Bitcoin really was. What, think, what is Ethereum? Well, no, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe? No, I was just going to say, I, I'm thinking about getting down into the rabbit hole. You say people are I'm not sure that's the right way to say it. They're getting into more detail, right? Oh, absolutely. But the rabbit hole is a difficult or complex situation from which you wish you hadn't gone that deep. <laughs> that's the actual, de- you didn't mean that, did you? No, no, no. Okay. Meaning that people just, are getting obsessed with Bitcoin and, and, and getting, getting obsessed getting, with the asset They're going class. deeper and deeper into the understanding of it and, and they build the ram of it and everything else. Not, absolutely. Not getting themselves into a, a more, which I think you may have been correct in the first place. Well, I think what we're starting to see is that those people who are starting to be naysayers about Bitcoin and kind of reject it are those that just haven't dug in and done their homework on it. From our seats, you know, our firm, we're the largest growing asset management business in the space. We manage almost $3 billion today. We run a Bitcoin strategy, an Ethereum Classic strategy, and a Zcash strategy. And the reason that these funds have come into the market and had the success that they had is because people not only want exposure to the asset class, but they actually want diversification. there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The, the slides, the videos go on and on. More and more people are talking about this phenomenon. But what I'd like to share with you is a little bit longer video. I'm going to actually sit back and relax with you and learn about why, where Bitcoin came from, the money situation in our world, and how this is our way to take back our lives with this cryptocurrency. And it's called Bitcoin. So I would just encourage you to sit back and relax and we will all enjoy this video. Have a cup of coffee, grab a sandwich or whatever, and really soak this in and where we're going with this crypto revolution that's happening right before our eyes. And at 64 years young, I must say, I really, really am catching on to this thing. I didn't think I ever would, but that is why I started PeopleHelpingPeopleClub.net where we can help other folks find out and learn about cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, and how we can turn that Bitcoin into an income for our family. Enjoy the video. My name is Chuck Shaduck. I will be back, and uh, enjoy is all I can say. Today, mankind stands at a crossroads, and the path that humanity chooses may have a greater impact on our freedom and prosperity than any event in history. In 2008, a new technology was introduced that is so important that its destiny and the destiny of mankind are inextricably interlinked. It is so powerful that if captured and controlled, it could enslave all of humanity. But if allowed to remain free and flourish, it could foster unimaginable levels of peace and prosperity. It has the power to replace all financial systems globally 
to supplant 90% of Wall Street and to provide some functions of government. It has no agenda. It's always fair and impartial. It cannot be manipulated, subverted, corrupted, or cheated. And it inverts the power structure and places control of one's destiny in the hands of the individual. In the future, when we look back at the 2.6 million year timeline of human development and the major turning points that led to modern civilization, the creation of farming, the domestication of animals, the invention of the wheel, the harnessing of electricity and the splitting of the atom, the 60 year development of computers, the internet and this new technology will be looked upon as a single event, a turning point that will change the course of human history. It's called Full Consensus Distributed Ledger Technology, and so far, its major use has been for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, but its potential goes far, far beyond that. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there, I will put the link to the complete video of this, the crypto revolution and the hidden secrets. This is a great video to watch, so let me stop sharing. Come right back here and I'll just pop on this and say thanks again, folks. My name is Chuck Shaduck, the Digital Duck, and I really do, really do wish that maybe you would stop by my peoplehelpingpeopleclub.net and just learn how we are utilizing Bitcoin and the power of the people coming together, all working together. We can really change a lot of lives around the world with this new asset called Bitcoin. It can change lives, and I'm out here to change the world myself. I want to take this internet highway and bring us back face-to-face -face talking to each other. So stop by. I'll put the link below this video also. Stop by whenever you can. It'll be at my uh, Zoom office link, and this is my office that's in my home in St. Joe, Missouri, and you're welcome to come by and find out. We got to bring back, folks, talking to people face-to-face, -face, saying hello. Stop the competing. Let's reach out and share our love and our kindness with people around the world. I'm Chuck Shaduck. I shall see you next time because I never want to say goodbye. Until now.